Good morning, and welcome to The Lighthouse, presented by Church of the Open Door. We are located at 816 13th Avenue North in Clinton, Iowa. You're invited to join us for our Sunday morning worship service at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. For more information on the church, you can visit us online at kotod.church. That's C-O-T-O-D dot church. You ever have a song when you're going to bed, it's like, oh, can I get this song out of my head? Sometimes it's a good, it's not bad. I mean, it's still driving you bananas, but it's a good song. Uh, I love it when I wake up in the morning. Uh, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. You know that song? Two days ago, I woke up singing that one around the house. And I forgot that we had company too, but uh, I don't think they minded, and I don't even know if they heard me. But um, I tell you what, when God puts a song in your heart, it's much more than just a tune. Uh, it's much more than just uh, something to get you through your day. It's a, it's a promise that God gives you. Uh, it's what we're talking about today. Uh, I promise. We live in a day of iPads, iPods, uh, I, I anything else. I want to talk this morning about His promise. And so i got a couple announcements here that I want to just give you, but go ahead and turn with me to the book of Joshua, okay? And we're going to be looking. I'm just going to read you a portion from Joshua 1. I'm going to give you a heads up right now. We are not going to get through this one, just, just because I like to talk, okay? And <laughs> I think Jesus has some things he wants to say. And so hold on to your notes. We're going to get through there. But I want, what I want to talk to you about is God's promises. I want to talk to you about the promises of God. And I'm only going to go through point number one because I, I thought we'd get through it, but, and I was trying to push through it, but then I thought, no, we need to hover because I, I want us to just hang just a little bit. If you're here today and, and you're new in your walk with Christ, you need to know what the promises of God are and what, what you need to do with them. If you're here and you've been walking with Christ for 50,000 years, first of all, that's impressive. But, but, but secondly, it doesn't mean that you don't need to hear this. We all need to be reminded. That's why why. Why he says, when you come to the table, do this in what? Why would he tell us to remember? Because we forget. We forget. We get busy with our lives and we're, 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 we're just shucking and jiving or you know, just working through the, the, the day, trying to jump through the hoops and hoping to have time with the family and just, just to relax and, and avoid as many problems as we can and have a stress-free life, forgetting to declare and stand on the promises of God. That does not mean by standing and declaring in the promises of God. That does not mean that you have to become some weird person. God just wants to be a part of what it is that you're doing. It boils down to that. And so when you declare his promises, you'll find that, that there's something amazing. Joshua was one who did this. Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to read Joshua chapter 1. Uh, I'm going to read verses 1 through 8. Because what happens is, is Moses is the man. He's calling the shots. You know, God is talking to uh, Moses. Moses is telling Joshua um, what's going on, but then all of a sudden Moses dies. And now God's speaking to Joshua. And when he speaks to Joshua, Joshua has this question. Who, me? <laughs> you're, you're talking to me? I, I can't do this. And God has to come along and tell him to be strong and courageous, right? And uh, why? Because though the promise is there, as we'll see in a moment, though the promise is there that God has given Joshua feels inadequate to even receive this promise that God will give. Kind of like you and me feel when we finally come to a revelation of Jesus Christ that he wants to embrace us and forgive us. We don't feel worthy of the love that he wants to give because we know what, uh, I'm trying to think of the best word, how goofy we can be, how many sins we've committed. Uh, we know all the boneheaded mistakes. And we say, God, you still love me? And he says, yes. You see, it's in those moments that determine, are you going to then receive those promises, believe in them and stand on them, or are you going to not? It makes all the difference in the world. So here's Joshua, chapter 1, now, uh, chapter one, verse 1. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, crossing this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you, just as I spoke it to Moses. From the wilderness, and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward, uh, as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun, will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, 
I will be with you. I will not forsake you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of, possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your ways prosperous and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I, this is a very powerful, powerful section that I don't even know if I fully understand yet. As I read it, my, my spirit gets stirred and I go, ooh, there's more under there, isn't there? And, and, but I'll tell you what I do see. You, you've got to, have you ever felt like like the world is crashing in on you, and even though you know God has some promises in here, you have no clue how they can apply to you. Uh, how, how can I use these things? How can I make them work? It would be like you giving me a toolbox and saying, fix the car. I wouldn't know what tool to grab or where to put the tool or what to do under the hood of the car because I don't understand how this, thing's, this thing uh, of an automobile works. But if I put it into the hands of a master mechanic, they can get that thing whistling and zipping right along and things are fine in a heartbeat. God gives you his word. And you may feel like he's giving you a toolbox that you don't know how to use it. But I want to tell you this. If you will just give him permission. If you'll just give him room. And if you'll stop saying things like, I'm not good enough. God can't use me. Well, that's for them, but not for me. God can never make anything out of my life. If you would stop saying those things long enough to hear what he is saying, you'd, you'd hear him say that you are a child of God. He loves you. You don't have to be a slave any longer because he has promised. And if God promises, you can take it to the bank. You can take it to the bank. Have you ever had a, ca a check that was given to you and you took it to the bank and it bounced? No, well, happens to some of us. I can't depend on that. Why? Because they gave me a promissory note that said the funds would be there, but when I got there, they weren't there. And sometimes we get afraid that if we take this check to the bank, even though the preacher said it, and even though he said the Word of God said it, what if God doesn't show up? What if God doesn't come through? But you see, Joshua, here's a young man who had no problem following Moses' lead, but he ran into a problem. Moses died. And when Moses died, God spoke to him and said, you continue to lead. I, I've given you my promise. I've given you my word. Now go. And no man shall stand against you. God, think about that for a moment. If God told you, here's my plan for your life, no man will stand against you. Oh man, what kind of a confidence would that give you? Yet, yet he had to tell him, be, be strong and courageous. Why? Because he was scared, like you and me would be. Has God ever led you into a situation, a season in life that you weren't too sure about? It could have been a new job. You could be graduating or have graduated this last year and some of you are starting college. I know a few students who have moved out of here and they've gone to universities. They're in a new season and, and they, they can hear all day long, God say, be strong and courageous, but that means nothing unless they're willing to go and stand on that promise, which means quit saying you're going to follow God and start following him. Quit saying, I know what the promises are, and start acting upon them. Are, are, are you following me? Okay, okay. Maybe I'm just preaching to myself for a minute. Because <laughs> sometimes I have to remind myself, you've gotten a little too comfortable. Because when God calls you to stand on a promise, you can take it to the bank that he's going to back it. He said to, to uh, Joshua, because Joshua was nervous, he was scared, he was fearful, which I completely understand. But he said that he, the promise he made to Moses he will complete in the life of Joshua. I'm looking at my Bible, but I don't see it yet. It's there somewhere. But it's, I, I got too much going through my head right now because many of us, we get stuck here. Uh, we, we, we say, okay, that's what God had for that season. But, but though God's speaking to me, I just don't know if I can do it. And we kind of eliminate ourselves when God says, I have qualified you. I have qualified you for the promises of God. Don't think there is, there is anything that you can do to disqualify you when God has called you qualified. When God has called you to something, there is nothing that can take that calling away except if you give it away. That's it. 
So I want to ask you here today, those of you, whether you've walked with the Lord five minutes, five days, five years, five decades, if God has called you to do something, are you willing to trust him to step out in that? It's like building a relationship with friends, with a husband or a wife. Um, I love my wife, but I'm sure there's some days I annoy her too. Not many of them, but hardly any, really. I think I'm annoying her right now. <laughs> my point is, is she's my best friend and I love her so much. I, I want, I, I love that. But can I tell you this? It didn't come overnight. There was a lot of tears. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of hurdles. There was a lot of hoops we had to jump through and be willing to say, say no to the world and yes to God like we talked about last week and develop that. Do you know that's what God wants? He says, would you just start walking with me like that? You know, don't worry about being so perfect, having everything right. Just start following me. And what, you know, I'll take care of the rest. Just walk with him. That's all he wants. See, these are the promises that he gives us that as we walk with him, God will take care of the rest. Usually we stop because of the fears we have. And we don't, we, we don't step out in that, in that, in faith. Have you ever wanted to be like somebody else. You know what I mean? You ever wanted to be like somebody else? I know I have. I grew up and I used to have friends. I'd look at them and say, man, I wish I had their house or their family or, you know, because obviously everybody in their own family says, oh, my family, you know, stinks. I wish I had their family. I had a great family looking back, but when I was a kid, every kid says that, you know, I'm a preacher's kid. This is horrible. Everyone, you know, they shouldn't be judging me and blah, blah, blah. And I kind of hid behind that, and, uh, which that didn't work very long. And uh, when I was growing up, I always wanted to be, have you ever wanted to be, just have a different identity? When I was a kid, you know who I wanted to be? Spider-Man. <laughs> I wanted to be Spider-Man. You know why? Because he can do whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches thieves just like, I mean, it was awesome. I would sing the song and I'd walk around the house, you know, dun, 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 Spider-Man, Spider-Man. And I would literally go through the house like this. I looked pretty dorky, you know, I'll admit that. And, but I thought I was Spider-Man. And Spider-Man can walk on walls. So I'd run on the couch and I'd, I'd go as fast as I could because the more speed you picked up, the more I could actually kind of go along the side of the couch. The problem is, is I tore that couch up. You know, so my mom wasn't too happy. She's like, I'm going to kill Spider-Man. And, uh, but Spider-Man, <laughs> Spider-Man was my, my child hero. If there was a green goblin in our neighborhood, Lord help him. Because I was going to snatch him up. Because I was the Spider-Man. But then as time went on, I had to give him up. At the age of 41, I finally switched my... <laughs> changed my hero. Now, finally I changed my hero because I was like, Spider-Man's cool, but you know what? Luke Skywalker's cooler. <laughs> you know it's true, don't you? Man, I walked around and I had my imaginary... Uh, lightsaber on one side, I have my gun on my leg. I was like, that's right. You want a piece of this? Don't mess with me. Where's the princess? You know, that's all. I, I was Luke Skywalker. That's just, that was me, and there's my princess. <laughs> and um, I, I was just, I was just bad. I was Luke Skywalker, and Luke Skywalker was awesome. Uh, but, but, then, but then I met Rocky Balboa. Dun, dun, ta, da, dun, ta, da, dun, ta, da, da. He's up on the top. Dun, dun, ta, dun, ta, dun. I used to stand around the house and do this. I wasn't going to run the stairs, but I'll do this, you know. <laughs> and uh, dun, dun, dun. I'd shadow box all the pillows on my bed, and I'd shadow box the cushions that I just ran over being Spider Man, you know. And I'd beat all the furniture up. And then, of course, I would leave it there for my mom. And she about killed me once again. But uh, he was now my new hero, but then eventually, you know, Rocky Balboa faded away, and before you know it, dun da dun 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 da dun Indiana Jones came along, and I was now a, a whip-wearing, gun-toting, leather-strapping, hat-wearing adventurer. You see, there was nothing wrong with having heroes in my life. As I grew up, I wanted to be, I wanted to be somebody else. But, but, but the problem was, is, is though that's okay through your childhood, that's normal to be Spider-Man at the age of 7 or 6 or 8, but it's not normal to try to be Spider-Man at 26 or 27 or 28. The problem is, is we have too many spiritually 
uh, spiritual Spider-Mans that are out there and they're still choosing to have their identity with something that's located in the world instead of identi identifying with the presence of God as our Savior. And, and we wonder why the world gives us a bad rap or it's so hard or difficult, but it's because we're going like this. <laughs> why in the world help me out? Because you look like a dork. <laughs> There's some maturity and growth that has to happen spiritually. Was it okay to say dork in church? Okay. But you get my heart behind that. Too many times we forget that God has given us a promise. And if you stand in the promise, you'll find out who you are in Christ Jesus. And when you find out who you are in Christ Jesus, you will stand firm. And nothing will shake you. But when you don't know the promises of God, you'll stand on anything that you have to to try to, to make life uh, livable. For, for so many years when I grew up, and I, you know, Spider-Man and Rambo and Rocky and all that, Schwarzenegger, you know, I'd always, it, it's cool. But when I became a teenager, I started to identify in wrong ways. I was trying to find out who I was. I didn't have a clue who I was. So I started to find my identity in things like Ozzy Osbourne, Led Zeppelin, Tone Loke, Bobby Brown. It was all about music and it was all about fun and it was all about flash and bling and glitter and looking for love in all the wrong places. You can kind of figure out the rest. And I looked for my identity to be met, be met by other people, by other things. And you know what? The enemy was more than happy to provide opportunities. More than happy. It wasn't until a couple of years into my marriage, to be honest with you, not that I wouldn't be honest with you, but it was like a couple of years where I really learned more about who I was in Christ Jesus. A couple of years into my marriage, I finally learned what it meant to experience the promises of God. Somebody introduced me to the Word of God. Now you might say, what? You grew up in a pastor's home. Did you not know the Word of God? Well, yes and no. I knew of the Word of God. I knew the word, there was the Word of God. I knew the Word of God uh, uh, was always in my dad's hand, or almost always, and I don't mean that sarcastically. I mean it like he, he, it, it, it was, he was feeding himself. I wasn't feeding me, though. I knew the Word of God, but I didn't know the Word of God. I knew it here. I could tell you, for God's love the world that he gives only begun son, there, whoever. You know, the fact that I can rattle John 3.16 off like that does not impress God. What impresses God is when I can slow down and say, the very God that loves me. I, don't, I, I got a son. And I'm just going to be honest. I don't think I could send him to some place to die for somebody else. But God. You see, now I don't just know it. Now I know it. That's his promise. Do you know that, that, that God loves you so much? We may not get any further than just that. God loves you so much. He's, your, he's not just your father, God. He wants to be your dad. You know, we, 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 we mess this up in this world. Who's your daddy? You know, and say something like that. But I'm going to tell you what. I'll tell you who your daddy is. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. I'm not, I'm not making fun. He is your dad. One of the greatest things that God wants from us. Last week, Seth has a, I asked him if I could share this. Um, as a group of friends, I'm getting to know and as a parent, I'm going to do everything to annoy them and push their buttons and see what comes out, you know. And because um, I want to know who he's hanging around with. Because the Bible says, uh, you hang around wise people, you become wise. You hang around fools, you become fools. And um, so I went out there and I'm pushing the buttons and talking. Hey, how you doing? Where are you going to go to school? What are you going to do? And then finally I said, all right, well, I'm done talking. I'll go now. And as I turned, my son said, see you later, Dad. I love you. Now, he didn't know it at the time. He didn't even know I was going to share this this morning. But when he said that, I went. <laughs> Not outside, because they would have, Dad, get out of here. But I was like, yes. I'm going to tiptoe away from them, because I don't want to screw this up. <laughs> he still loves me. <laughs> I walked in the house, and I'm like, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Do you know that is exactly what your Father God does? When's the last time you said, I love you, Dad? When's the last time? Let it be today. Do you know that he does that? You're hanging around your friends, you're at work, and he told you, you know, here's the one about the priest and the, the bartender, and, the, and you're over here saying, you know, did you hear about Jesus Christ? You know, I'm not saying be weird and go 
preaching. But I'm talking about, when's the last time in an atmosphere where there's all this rudeness and crudeness that you told Jesus you loved him? And he went. And then he walked around saying, that's right. That's my boy. That's my daughter. You see, these promises, promises, when, when, when somebody encourages your heart, uh, hold on to that. Let me show you one of them here. I keep this in my Bible. You know why? Because it's a promise, not from the Word of God, but from my daughter, Drea Faith. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how old she was, but she doesn't know how to spell the word quit when she wrote this. G-U-I-T-E. And uh, sometimes when I get discouraged and I forget the promises of God, are we okay just kind of talking because this has been more like not really a sermon, so... But it's more of an experience. Um, when I get discouraged and I, I feel like I don't have what it takes, because if you're sitting there saying, well, we expect you to have it all together because you're the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no better than you. I have my moments. And um, God still loves me where I'm at. He loves you too. And when you forget that, sometimes you need to be reminded. And I was having a, I was having a difficult de- day, and uh, I don't know, I don't even remember what was going on, which is probably a blessing. Um, and I, I walked into my office, and I found this on my Bible. And you can kind of see how it's just written in, like, second-grade handwriting, you know? It's got these humongous letters. And there's no flow to it at all, and it's just, you know, big writing there. And my daughter writes this, and I'm like, oh, what am I doing? I shouldn't be in ministry. You know, this is, I made a stupid choice, and, and I'm just, you know, just, so she wrote me this big lettered uh, note, and it says this, you are doing a great job at being a pastor. Please don't ever quit. Isn't that cool? Now, I share that with you not to get the awes, because my daughter wrote, wrote this cool note. What I want you to dote on is God knew that my heart was discouraged. And he said, I'm going to find a way to get my promise to my kid, and you know what? I'll think, I think I'll use his kid to do it. <laughs> Isn't that neat how God works? Yeah, so don't get all hung up in, oh, that was so special and that was so sweet. Yes, it was, but not because it was my daughter, because God loved me so much, he knew my heart, that he even would use someone like my daughter to meet a need in my heart. She never knew this. I, I don't even know if she does right now. <laughs> But I tell you what, God loves you so much that when you feel so discouraged, he will find a way. He will find a way. And you will not expect it to be this way when you're looking and saying he's going to move A, B, C, or D. God's going to choose uh, triple Q, you know, a letter we don't even have. He's going to use a way that you will not ever experience. Next week, bring your outlines next week because we're going to continue this. But Because I didn't even say one thing on the outline. Um, <laughs> except Joshua 1.8. But let me tell you something. Uh, the presence of his Holy Spirit and the promise of his word is better than anything Pastor Jim Machen can come up with, right? I don't have a problem saying that, so you please feel free to amen that, because if you're trying to live your life based upon my words, God help you. <laughs> but if you are trying to live life based upon uh, nothing but the presence of the Holy Spirit, God is helping you. His promise, I'm going to give you this. I want you to write this down, okay? Before we do, I'm going to pray, but I want you to write this down. Um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 23, which says this. I asked you last week, how many of you guys, how many of you did the three by five card? Matthew 16, 17. Upon this Peter, yeah, I will build my church, heavens, gates of heaven will not, or gates of hell will not prevail against it. Um, get that in your heart. I said, here's my challenge. We're going to talk about the promises of God. We're going to talk about a few other things, but it will do absolutely no good to talk about his promises and never actually try to eat them, receive them, get them down in our spirit. You know what I'm talking about? Don't actually eat the card, uh, but let it become a, memorize it. Write down Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. That says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Let me read it one more time. 
is what we're going to learn together. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Father, I thank you that you are a faithful God and that your promises never return null and void. So Jesus, I pray that as we just follow the lead, even in a service this morning, that Lord, as we leave today, we would not stop that. We would continue to follow your lead, that we would take your word and hide it in our hearts so that we might not sin against thee. You also said in your word that your word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path that will illuminate the next step. For those of us that are here and we don't know what the next step is, as we get into your word, you'll show us and as we take the next step, you'll reveal the next one. As we take the next step, you'll reveal the next one. Father, I pray for those that would take that bold step and be courageous and be strong and just take that next step. Maybe you're here today and the next step for you is a relationship with God. I don't want to let a week go by where I never said, hey, here's an opportunity. Maybe you're here today and you need to make that decision to for Jesus to be in your life, to receive that ultimate promise of salvation. If that's you, would you just simply raise your hand that I might agree in prayer with you. And as you raise your hand, God sees your heart. I agree with you. God sees your hand too. Yep, sees your hand. As you raise your hand, you're saying, I agree with you, Jesus. I want those promises. Father, you see every hand that's been lifted, and I pray today in the name of Jesus that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, which essentially means come alongside and save us from our sins. We confess with our mouth that we are sinners and we need a Savior. And so today, we know that by raising our hand, we've said, Jesus, I'm saying no to the world and yes to you. And it's going to be difficult at times, but I now serve a God that will help me through those difficult times. So I ask that you would pour forth your Holy Spirit upon them today. And that, Lord God, when the waves of this world come crashing in, that they will be strengthened and know that they are a child of God. And nobody can take that away. And we're not going to give it away. Amen? Thank you for tuning in this morning. We hope that you'll join us again next week. Or better yet, join us in person. We are located at 816 13th Avenue North in Clinton, Iowa. Our Sunday morning worship service is at 830 and 1030 a.m. If you have any questions about our church or what it means to follow Christ, check us out online at cotod.church. That's C-O-T-O-D dot church. We look forward to hearing from you soon.